Jonathan. Appreciate everybody being here. Obviously a, an awesome day for us, a historic day for the University of Miami in terms of recruiting. Um, a lot of effort from a lot of unbelievable people. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, they need to be mentioned. I mean, everyone from uh, the administrators, a lot of people that are here right now, people in development, recruiting, uh, our coaching staff, a lot of just incredible hours on the road away from families, the wives back home who certainly uh, you know, do a great job in just making sure that families and everything, the daily processes go with it. I know we gotta take my wife to dinner eventually before um, you know, they make me leave the house, but uh, our players, our players have did uh, an amazing job at making sure that they were very open and honest about the University of Miami, our direction, our culture, but uh, all that leads to a top uh, five finish and still going, we're not done yet. Uh, we can't be done yet. Recruiting is an, an ever always just moving process that requires every ounce of what you have while you're developing your football team. We have some holes to fill. We filled some. We're excited about it. Uh, 15 players in the top 300. Um, I could keep going on and on and on about stars and rankings, but I'm more concerned about how they play and conduct themselves when they get here. Sound familiar? Jimmy Johnson, right? Back in 1986-87. So, but uh, we're blessed to have these young men join us to earn the trust and the confidence of their families and their trust and their confidence was earned through a process involving transparency, honesty, persistence, and passion uh, about the University of Miami, which we all know and feel is the greatest place in the country. And they had a chance to see it, some on several occasions, and uh, we welcome them to our family today. Okay, so instead of just sitting up here and becoming a, uh, a dissertation type of press conference, uh, we're going to open it up to talk about, you know, whether by position, position groups, whatever it may be, because there's a lot of guys, right, I believe 25 high school guys so far are in, four transfers are in. Like I said, that's a fluid number, it's going to keep going. Um, the roster itself is always fluid, so uh, that being said, I'm sure I've missed some people. A couple of people I really want to thank that they never get credit. Juan Navarro, um, Dennis Smith, Mackenzie Rizzi. Three absolute warriors in recruiting behind the scenes 24-7, and they do it all. They absolutely do it all. And if you could work uh, at the intensity levels that we have to work at on a daily basis, it takes a lot, and they provide us with everything we need to be successful. Okay, and uh, again, we feel like we're just getting started. It's an awesome day. Incredibly excited. We want it to keep going, and it will. You know, it will. We'll just have to have a press conference at another time. So. That being said, questions, please. You signed uh, Chris Johnson and Mark Fletcher at running back. Talk about the way they complement each other and what they add to the running back room. Uh, two very unique uh, individuals and two very different skill sets, right? One is, is borderline world-class speed, explosive as it gets. You know, touch the ball, find a crease, and gone. You know, also excellent out of the backfield, a track star, going to run track here at the University of Miami as well. Known Chris a long time, came to camp. Mark Fletcher has been a Hurricane fan since he's been a little dude, you know. It's funny when I see these pictures roll in about them when they were playing youth football and I see the guys they played with, a lot of, oftentimes end up being University of Miami Hurricanes. So critically important to get that message out there are youth camps and those programs have got to really expand because if they're wearing that U when they're this tall, it's gonna be much easier to say yes on signing day when they're this big. So Mark Fletcher, you know, a uh, powerful a championship program, elusive, strong, fast, smart. Um, he has all the traits like Chris that you want in a running back. 6'2", 215 pounds. Um, Chris Johnson's about 185 now on his way to being 200 pounds. So you're looking at guys that aren't small. These are guys that, you know, they've got a little bulk to them. Um, they have uh, tremendous lower body strength and explosiveness and power, ability to just drop their hips, redirect, come to balance. Uh, they're not afraid to block either. You watch them in pass protection. You know, you watch them when they're running down the field and blocking on sweeps or when the ball cuts loose. Uh, these guys are, are just championship mentality guys and they were must have guys for our program. Coach, what will Emory Williams bring to the quarterback room? He is uh, four point something, I forgot what it was, but he's up there. He's an honor student and he, he approaches the game in the same manner. Uh, he is a student of the game. He is a relentless, tireless worker. He spends his free time just out there 
working out, uh, getting with quarterback specialists, finding teammates, creating new teammates just to get work in and get better at it. Six foot four plus, uh, it's really accurate arm. Um, he can run, okay, he's not a, what you consider a dual threat quarterback. The outside world for us, he could run as well as you need to run. Uh, he's really smart, understands protections. He's a complete quarterback. And him being here in camp and working with us answered all the questions we needed. He checked all the boxes. Awesome family, awesome young man, tremendous leadership skills, and a tremendous desire to be elite. And that really separates him from a bunch of other quarterbacks we recruited. Mario, what does it say about, first about you and your staff that you were able to bring in this class, and about the, the players in the class that they were all bought into what you guys were telling them after the season that you guys had? Right. Well, I mean, first of all, I want to give credit to the staff. I really would rather not take any credit. You know, I think that them, and I wrote down a bunch of stuff and a bunch of people. Um, I find myself fumbling for this paper. I blame Cam for that. But it's not just, it's the coaches, it's the analysts, the grad assistants, right? You think Reggie Bain had any pressure? <laughs> Ruben Bain to come here? Uh, the medical staff, I mean, you know, everybody's involved. I mean, you have these visits, you have physicals, equipment, uh, the recruiting we mentioned already, the people in the video, how about the graphics they pumped out today? How about the edits they produced throughout the course of the year to keep recruiting alive? Um, our chaplain, creative, nutrition, they all do a great job. But back to the class itself, what does it say? It speaks just, you know, what it should speak, truth and reality. You know, this is very, uh, you feel like you're in a, I feel like it's a little bit of a deja vu in terms of just path along a very blessed career where, you know, you have the opportunity to, to jump right in and start rebuilding. And what do we sell? The truth and honesty. That the roster at Miami needs to look a certain way. And National Signing Day is kind of, for each program, is the beginning of building a championship football team, right? Talent acquisition, player development, and then personnel use, right? Comes in those three facets. So from the beginning, uh, the, the message was consistent. We never strayed from it. Uh, we're always transparent and honest. They were here. Our players were transparent and honest with our recruits as well. And that's why through, through rough patches, you are able to sustain that level of trust and confidence to put together a class like this. So credit to everybody. I mean, everybody's involved. Everybody affects somebody. And, um, you know, we, we're very strong believers that this is more than just recruiting. This is relationship building. This is building a partnership. We don't kidnap someone's son and bring him over here and say, hey, we'll bring him back in four years. We align ourselves with our goals and our principles and our values with these families to make sure we're all on the same page, to make sure on this journey, because you will go through some, some rough patches, that everyone can stick together and find a way to make it work. So all those things, you know, came to fruition. And again, it's, we're not done, so it's, uh, hopefully it's going to keep uh, trending in a direction we'll keep getting more and more momentum. Mario, right, right. looking across the board, it seems like you had a lot of good size to the class, both on the offensive line, but also a linebacker. Um, mm -hmm. Were those just kind of two positions that you felt like you guys maybe need to get a little bit bigger at going forward? Well, we had to get a lot bigger. We had to get a lot bigger. You know, we girth, size, power, I mean, power in the trenches, the line of scrimmage, being able to control the line of scrimmage, knock people back. Um, sustained blocks, being able to be effective in block destruction, shed blockers, um, be able to be a knockback tackler, right? Big difference in being able to strike somebody and knock it back or prevent them from gaining any extra yardage as opposed to, you know, maybe um, drag down tackling, you know, wrap and rolling, some of that stuff when you could really create second and nine, second and ten as opposed to second and four. So. Those things are important. We have we got significantly larger at those positions, but also we think that we uh, we brought in some really high level athletes, some high level football IQs, uh, a lot of length to those positions as well, and range when you're playing the offensive line position. And all these guys play all the positions; they all do. Um, that you're able to have guys that can cover a lot of ground and recover. So if they do take a poor step, if they do take a poor set, if they miss with a punch hand that they can recover, redirect, get good head placement, hand position, and still be able to, um, to have a successful rep. So we feel very, very confident in what we have acquired in this, uh, in this year's class at both those positions, and we expect some epic battles both in the spring and the fall. Coach, you mentioned four transfers. Can you name the four to confirm them and then what they're bringing to your team? Absolutely. 
Absolutely, okay. All right, before transfers. I feel like I'm studying for finals. I get a learning center, you know what I mean? All right, Cam, there you go, buddy. Keep these tight ends, O-line, D-line, an area I like to stop frequently at. All right, here we go, the transfers. Okay, we'll start with Thomas Gore, who joins us, you know, over from Georgia State. Uh, just a really productive player on film. I just great with his hands, technician, plays a lot of power, all-conference player. Um, he's generated 76 pressures and 14 sacks um, over three seasons, and he's just, he, he was great to connect with, shares the type of mindset and DNA that we're looking for. Uh, Francisco Maui Noah, okay, who happens to be related to Francis Maui Noah, who are six hours difference from us right now back in Hawaii and um, these two guys are they're special guys in a special family really looking forward to that battle right there these are two enormous gigantosaurus rex type human beings okay? <laughs> and they are extremely uh, Francis lets me know every single day how well he catches the ball so obviously he's trying to set up for a tackle touchdown <laughs> that's for later in the conversation but I need to point out Francisco was recruited independently of Francis Okay, he goes by Kiko and Francis goes by CC. So Kiko, if you watch him, he's arguably a top three linebacker in the Pac-12. All right, if you, if you, I don't know if you guys watch PFF or kind of take a peek at that every now and then, his grades are off the charts in both, you know, defending the run and in pass coverage. And he's a large guy, he's a striker, a knock you back tackle, he uses his hands really, really well. Uh, diagnosis plays um, extremely, extremely well. Just a very seasoned football player. And a guy we're really excited about, um, Devontae Brown, who, again, is another, I know what it's like to play with a brother, and a couple of these guys have that opportunity. I think that's extremely special, um, especially if you don't like him. You could hit him every day, you know. But <laughs> Devontae Brown, um, he's played 1,900 snaps and allowed just four touchdowns in coverage at UCF. He is a large defensive back with a lot of range, great hips, great feet, great hands. Um, again, he's another guy. We're glad they're both here together, but would have been recruited independently of his brother when he hit the portal. Uh, he has two seasons of eligibility remaining. Thrilled to have him. Obviously, his father, Selden, was a great player here. Thrilled to have Damari as well. You know, he just announced we got his paperwork and so we're allowed to speak about him. One of the elite corners in the country this year. I mean, that's that's kind of sums it up right there. I mentioned Francisco earlier, but I failed to mention Francis. You know, um, one of the elite players overall in the country this year as well at 335 pounds, you know. And that's a moon pound, it's probably 350, you know what I mean? So he's a guy that we're counting on, both these guys, all these guys to make an impact right away. And then J.B. on Cohen, who joins us from Alabama. He started 25 games over the last couple of years over there uh, with 38 knockdown blocks. Um, He's, he's a top offensive lineman in the portal. Um, Coach Mirabal and him hit it off right away. Hard not to hit it off with Coach Mirabal when you're talking about the old line. You know, he, uh, he's allowed, did not allow a sack, I'm sorry, in 1,600 snaps at Alabama and was a freshman all SEC player. 325 pounds, just athletic, tough, smart guy, um, a system that's very familiar to the system that we run, so the transition is something that we expect to be smooth and seamless and brings a lot of energy, a lot of toughness, a uh, very seasoned player that brings a lot to the table. So, you know, we're, we're working our way towards a roster that, you know, is, uh, is physically getting to where it needs to be. But those are the four current transfers which we have received um, financial aid agreements from. Obviously, that's a, that, that keeps going and going, so. Mark, can you talk about the, the punter? I know he doesn't get the same attention as maybe one of the five stars or whatever, but how do you find him, um, you know, and, and what do you expect from, from him? And I assume he'll be, you know, Jordan the day one starter, right? You know, the scholarship punter? He is, yeah, you know, I mean, he's a, I'm sorry to say, he's a scholarship punter. He's a scholarship yeah. punter, absolutely, absolutely. I just want to get some, so I make sure I, I got the right statistics. He, uh, we want to get another Lou Headley, but we want to get the first, you know, Dylan Joyce. You know, I don't want a guy to feel like, hey, you're the next is. You're the, we'd rather say you're the first of, you know, your kind. And, you know, film-wise, uh, film he was by far, by far, 
the very best and could do the things that we do. You know, this year we were a top 10 special teams operation in just about every unit. In the conference, we were top one or two in three or four of those phases, and a large reason why was because of Lou and his ball placement. You know, the ability to just extend, you know, uh, plays when you're punting the football. Ball placement, he can roll right and punt right, roll right, punt left, put it right down the middle, sit still and punt it either way. And we feel that uh, Dylan can do that. Um, just a lot of characteristics of what we're looking for. Hard working guy, not afraid to tackle. Punters every now and then gotta get down there and make a tackle. And he has experience doing that, so we're thrilled to have him. Um, he, he's part of this part of this class. Will be here shortly. Mario, what do you expect as far as like uh, leadership from players in this class? And the, the players I met, like uh, Ray Ray, Ruben Bain, Mark Fletcher, a lot of them are very you know took on leadership roles with their high school teams. I'm not saying they're going to come in and be leaders on the day one, but you know to be leaders in their class and going forward. Well, no, it makes great sense. You know, especially the way you know you mentioned their posture at the end leaders of their class. And the most important thing is, right, getting everybody to come together, right? Because when you, if you're putting together a great football team, like you look at this list right here, these are alphas, right? These are guys that are used to being the top dog at their respective place. They're used to being the guy. And that's what we recruit, that's what we're gonna recruit. And they all come from different parts, they come in different shapes and sizes. And now the goal is to make sure they bring them all together, you know, to be part of one common culture and brotherhood and make sure we're all working in the same direction, right? And, and it's okay to have bumps, you know, and along the way some, you know, a little grinding, you know, some, uh, some intense moments as you figure that stuff out because typically people that have high care factors are gonna be competitive and competition brings intensity and passion out of people. And that's what we have to litter our locker room and green tree practice field with. That's where all this thing comes into play in a manner where, you know what, it's gonna up the level of what we do and how we do it. <clears throat> I'm counting on every single one here to bring everything they have, also to come with an open mind and open heart to join together, right, in a football family, a brotherhood. I think oftentimes, and I've been part of staff, where you make the mistake, oh, these guys are coming over to take over and these guys, no. Come on, man, we're one team. The enemy's in the other locker room. And we've got to learn how to play together to do that. You know, the offseason has got to be extremely important. Every, every piece of it, every day has to be geared towards doing that, accomplishing that. So that's uh, what we expect from them. You mentioned Reuben Bain. I mean, Mr. Everett, he's just about won every award. He's out of space in his house for trophies and medals. And a guy that I think they're at the end, him and Samson Okulola, you know, they both provided a tremendous amount of momentum going down the stretch to make this the kind of class that it is. Um, but he he represents, you know, him, Ray Ray, Robbie, Bobby, I mean, all these guys represent, you know, what Dade County um, football is. Just hard-nosed, tough guys, great families, hard-working families. I mean, these guys are, they're the real deal, you know, and they join the guys from Broward County that are also the exact same, a lot of them we're familiar with because we know them. I'm trying to make sure. I know we mentioned Damari earlier, Mark Fletcher, you know, um, Antoine Jackson, who graduated early. You know how hard it is to graduate early and get reclassified? That's hard. You know, that takes a lot. He's going to get great mentorship from the guys here. You know, we already have that planned out for him. Ray Ray, come on now. You know, can't find a bigger playmaker. And that out there, you know, unless you go down the street and you got Robbie. So you got two guys that are making plays and that are just exceptional guys that just don't waver, right? No matter what, these guys are, they want to be Miami Hurricanes. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a Miami Hurricane. It meant that much more to wear the U than to wear anything else. Did he call it the U back then? It was UM, right? My dad used to say, when we go into the UM, the UM, you know? I love that. I'll never forget that. And to our community, it's got to mean that much more as well. So, you know, for example, Ruben Bain gets a sack the other night, right? In the state championship game, he throws up a U. Well, you notice in the stands, half the people in the stands are wearing University of Miami football gear. That's awesome, right? That's always been part of the fabric of our team. So, but then we're all from all over as well. And you know what? A guy that doesn't get spoken about enough is Bobby Washington. You want to talk about a guy that can run and strike and is really, really gifted. I remember recruiting his father back in the day, you know, he still looks like he could play, you know, and 
just an awesome family, hard working mom. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So. Well, you get some international guys too. Is it uh, Collins Action Pond? I want to pronounce that right. Frankie Tinlau guys. Action Pond. Frankie Tinlau, those guys. Tinlau. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just if you can speak to them, what you like about their personalities and their fit for the school. Oh, they're these guys. Like uh, they're just they're humble, driven guys. They're grateful to be playing a game of football. Like they treat football and they look at it as, man, what a privilege it is to play this game. Now granted, six, six and six, seven and a half, yeah, you know, makes them attractive, right? Being able to come off the edge the way that Collins does, being able to get his hands on people and shed them the way he does, um, obviously, you know, makes it really, really special. That's a uniquely talented, size spec, you know, in, intangible type guy that is really, really hard to find. And the same thing goes for Frank. We offered Frankie before there was real film on him. You know, as, as an offensive line coach, Coach Mirabal has got an unbelievable set of lamps. I mean, he could really project very well. And watching those movements of his workouts on tape, the way he could bend and come out of his hips, big guys have a hard time stepping. He can get his ankle in the ground while fully bending and dropping his lower half down and then coming out of those hips and being explosive and showing great balance and body control as he slides and anchors and uses his hands. Another awesome young man and guys that, you know, I know Collins was a late flip, you know, but he always, his heart was always set on Miami. Frankie endured, you know, just about every recruiting pitch known to man and stayed loyal and stayed uh, with us the entire time. And all he did was just work, you know, get better, come out here and watch practice when he was allowed to, you know, be around us. So extremely grateful to those guys. Your thoughts on, on where you stand at wide receiver. Would you like ideally to add another veteran if the right one comes available in the portal? And uh, Robbie Washington and Joseph, your two receivers in this class area. Well, without a doubt, we, uh, well, first, the two guys that we got, we think they are dynamic playmakers. And we don't think, you know, when you set your recruiting board, they were at the top of the board. They were. They were must get guys, local guys. They had all the right, made of the right stuff. They did all the right things. Um, we got to see him at our seven on sevens, got to see him at camp and they were exceptional because they are elite route runners that can turn a five yard hitch into an 80 yard touchdown, right? And sometimes it's nice, you know, to be able to, you know, send out the PAT field goal units instead of second and five, second and six. These guys can do that. They were, you know, they're very, uh, they are, are very motivated. Uh, they love Miami. They've always loved Miami. We are continuing to pursue outside receivers. We are, we still need a couple of guys just to have a balanced roster and just to have normal numbers. We are low on numbers there and we also are pursuing defensive tackles. Those are the two areas that we haven't fully addressed yet in this recruiting class. All right, I know you can't name names. You do have one committed player who didn't sign today. Are you optimistic, hopeful, confident uh, that you could get We are optimistic and again? hopeful about every single person that we have recruited due to relationships and just a long, a long time being invested in these guys from a personal, professional standpoint. And then just, you're obviously an O-line guy, the two tech, or not just the two, but Francis and Samson obviously come with a lot of- It doesn't like, get just, better yeah, than those you, guys. Kind of I'll just start run. gushing about them right now before you finish the question. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't get better coming out of high school than with those, two. and I've been fortunate now. I mean, over the years, you know, Panay Sewell, you know, Cam Robinson, Jonah Williams, Alex Leatherwoods, these are, elite guys. You know, I was a GA here when I had a great fortune with Arthur Francis Kehoe recruiting, you know, Brian McKinney and those guys. Um, yeah, these guys are elite uh, monstrosities. They are ginormous human beings that don't move like big guys. They move like linebackers. They play with power. They have exceptional football IQ, relentless work ethics. They are as mean and nasty on the field as you can imagine. And I want to throw, you know, the other tags there, Frankie Tinalao, we just mentioned him. You know, I want to talk about Tommy Kinsler, Big Bruno, exact same thing. Bruno is an elite, powerful, knock you back as a road grader, but be able to dance on the edge of the perimeter with you, you know, at offensive tackle. And, and Frankie, the exact same thing. These are really, really powerful guys. On the interior, you got, you know, big Ed, Antonio Tripp, and he, uh, he is like the flagship, like, recruiter of the class. He committed early and he led the charge, you know. Him and his mom were unbelievable. Should have put him on staff early, you know. <laughs> really, really good. But the thing about that, he's, he's also really, 
really good person and he's a great football player. You know, and he made the move to IMG to, he felt he needed to further challenge himself and get in that environment. He ends up joining up with Jaden Wayne, you know, who relationships there, offered him a scholarship at the Pacific Northwest camp in Portland, Oregon, four years ago. Just watching this long, skinny dude, right? Looked like an avatar, running around all over the place, not knowing what's up. Found him, found, offered four years later. One of the best players in the entire country, Jaden Wayne, is a member of the University of Miami. Well, all of a sudden, he's over there with Antonio, with Francis, right? And then there's Riley Williams, who I had an opportunity to coach his brother at the University of Oregon. So a relationship forged there four years ago and offered him three years ago. All of a sudden, all these guys are playing together. You know, Riley, Jackson, and Carver, who could fly his own jet over if he wanted to. He's a pilot. He got his license. You know, Riley's a guy who was elite playing he was a big wide receiver that just kept growing and growing so he had to move a little bit closer to the ball you know and Jackson went from playing you know lacrosse and knocking people out sideways to making the jump to football and the rest has been history recruited by everyone in the country I know that uh, was, you, you asked a different question I don't know where it went but <laughs> what was your original yeah, question? It was about the two tackles Samson yeah. and, and well but again Francis, you know yeah. all these guys Frankie Again, five position guy. Uh, Big Bruno, Tom Kinsler, five position guy. All these guys have to be, and you know why? Just like with Panay School back in the day, he played left tackle his entire college career. Guess what? He was drafted sixth or seventh overall. They tapped him on the shoulder. Detroit Lions said, hey, buddy, I know you're a first round pick. You've got to go to right tackle. And shame on us if we don't prepare these guys to be successful because I know guys want to play in the NFL. We've got to make sure that they stay in the NFL. That's one of their goals. Right? So to do that, we got to make sure that they're very versatile. And that's part of our training regimen mm -hmm. for offensive line. And that's why Coach Mirabal continues to be known as, as the best old line coach in the country. Along those same lines, just the trenches in general. I know when you got here, it was kind of like you felt like you kind of filled it out through there. Can you just talk about just like how you kind of attached both sides of the trenches on the offensive line and the defensive line? Josh Horton, a big you know, body that's oh, long and stuff yeah. like that. You can talk about yeah. how far along that's come. Yeah, well. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you always study teams from afar because when you're strategizing, no matter where you work, you always look at what, you know, what the country looks like in case you have them on the schedule, in case you play them and want some background on them. And, uh, you know, felt coming in, that was one of the biggest things. Miami had to recruit different. You know, Miami should be stacking up classes like this year after year after year. And that hasn't happened. Not being critical, being honest. It's important we're honest in here, right? You've got to shoot straight. I used to dominate the draft. You should dominate the draft. First, second round picks, right? Dominated it. Well, that's, okay. Signing day results in better draft days. Okay, so that's why it is critical that this continues to take an uptick every single year. That we continue to invest in this, invest in people, right? Time, energy, making sure they get everything, every ounce that we have because that results in better organizations, better teams, better football families, right? Better universities. So that's what um, that's what we are invested in. The line of scrimmage, um, it has to look a certain way. To look a certain way, there has to be a size spec, a size spec uh, aspect. You cannot compromise. You cannot compromise toughness, intelligence, power, recoverability, um, athletic ability. Um, all these things are just. If you don't have them, it's hard to create that and make up for it in the weight room. The weight room is meant to enhance those qualities. You can't invent them in there. So, you know, our strength coach is probably the most excited guy because, I mean, we're, you know, we're bringing him some, some real deal, you know, awesome, awesome elite athletes to work with, you know. And, I, you know, coaches forever, man, they, they're kind of like a, you know, when you were a kid and you got those toys, no assembly required? Coaches are like that a lot. We're not. You know, we like investing time, building, reshaping, assessing, tweaking. And to get these guys in here early, about 20 of them are going to be able to come early, uh, is, is an unbelievable advantage. And the line of scrimmage always needs a little more time to develop. Well, that's what January, February, March, April are for. Right? Nowadays, that should, instead of, guys only shouldn't have to redshirt anymore. That should be that redshirt space. The springtime and winter. So a couple more for Coach. 
Yeah, with, uh, with 85 still being the limit. Continue working our way towards finding the, the very best 85 scholarship players and the very best 35 preferred walk-on players as well. And they've got to check boxes. And that's a never-ending process. That should never ever roster assessment, roster enhancement, uh, talent acquisition, and player development. Those things are just, they're never ending. So, I mean, we're, the numbers are fine. There's no concern there. I know you have to get to a certain number at the end. There's plenty of time and plenty of room. So it's, it's full systems, all systems go. It's full throttle going forward. We need to continue to acquire more elite talent. Mario, the uh, state of Georgia got three kids out of there. I don't think you've talked about them much yet. I don't know. What do you have next? The Geary, no, I don't. I'm going to ask them The Geary, uh, Horton, and uh, Pope. Popo. So Popo's father's from Miami, Florida. You know that? Coach Mirabal was his teacher. That's where that connection is right there, you know? So right away, tremendous connection. Big, physical guy. Downhill player, defensive player of the year in the region. I mean, I think he's up to, been up to 235 plus. When we first got here, he came for the first junior day. We were, we were in love with Popo. The connection, the family, uh, Mirabal, you know, knowing him from way back and then just the way he played, his style of play, a ball of energy, he is, he is off the charts. We've got to mention Malik Bryant too, because Malik Bryant is, has dual value. He's been playing inside linebacker and he's an absolute stud and he also has edge pressure capabilities and he's a guy that we're going to be able to use at both those spots. One of the highest rated players in the country at really at the linebacker position but also recognized for his ability to bring pressure to the passer. Austin family has been with us for a long, long time. We expect great things from him. You mentioned Georgia, Josh Horton. That's exactly what three techniques should look like. You know, he's over 6'4", he's 285 to 290 pounds. Uh, you probably saw footage of him on Twitter dunking over his friend. It didn't work out so well for his friend. But uh, this guy is a jumbo athlete that's explosive, natural pass rusher, natural run stopper, comes out of his hips. I mean, this is the best part about him. Okay, Coach Williams, you know, we got a chance to know him really well at Langston Hughes. Tremendous coach. I'm talking about culture, culture, culture. He gets there, I think their first year they won two games. Two games. This is what attracted him to Miami. And then his four year track there culminated in them winning the state title, you know, about two weeks ago. You know, you need that. And you want that on your team. Guys are willing uh, to go through what it takes to do it right. And I've seen, you know, the, the tough times. I've seen you know, the building have gone through some of the ups and downs. So I think he uh, he embodies all that stuff and more. Marcellius Pulliam, again, also another one, another state champion. And a guy, we were drawn to him because when we turned on his film, he was knocking people out left and right. That's what he was doing. Size speed guy. He's over 6'3". He's over 220 already and room to grow. And smart, and tough, and a hard worker. You know, those are things that we just weren't willing to compromise. Awesome guy to be around, all right? We didn't mention Caleb Spencer, who needs to be mentioned. I mean, just another guy, to turn on the film. Hard to find a safety in high school right now that runs the eye like he does and puts a stop to the run game. And he understands what the fits are. He understands coverages extremely well. High level IQ guy, really hard worker. Had an injury, season cut short, but until up until then, was one of the more physical players we had seen on tape at any position. Awesome guy to be around, great family. Um, a guy I certainly had to, to mention. I just don't want to leave anybody out. I didn't mention Robert Stafford, man. I mean, that's one of the most electric players in all of football right now. That guy does it all. I mean, he's like Spider-Man. I mean, he's catching balls all over the place as a receiver, as a DB, as a return specialist. Again, awesome. Awesome to be around these families. Awesome to be around. He's incredible. Uh, mentioned Bobby and Robbie. Jaden Wayne, we mentioned him. We mentioned Riley. Um, about we talked about um, we talked about Antoine John, uh, Antoine Jackson, Mark Fletcher, uh, Damari, Ruben, Popo. Did I miss anybody? Hurricane Bain, man. Hurricane Bain. Imagine being Reggie Bain walking around the office all the time. <laughs> hey, when's your brother coming? When's your brother coming? So uh, credit to him because you know what? He's a great young coach, and he's another one that's here independent of his brother's uh, recruiting process. Right? He's a, a 
really, really good young football coach. And you need those guys. You need people that are going to be good for young people. It's critically important. So, got to have that. But, I mean, you see what we're recruiting. I mean, we want to go after the best of the best and not slow down. And guys that are willing to compete, right? That's almost like a lost, like, art almost nowadays, right? Uh, we don't want whiners, complainers. We don't want tweet monsters. We want real deal people that understand the value of an education at the University of Miami, a private school elite education in the best city in the world and building what, rebuilding what has always been one of the premier and gonna be one day the premier program in the country once again. So the targets were, uh, were laid out and, and credit to the staff and everybody else. They did a great job. Coach, as far as this immediate, as far as just immediate impact, how would you compare this class to previous classes that you've recruited? This is, yeah. it was a 21 class at the University of Oregon, um, then a 19 class, and another three straight years of top 10 picks. Same thing at the University of Alabama. I feel that this class, the 13, or probably the 14 Alabama, the 20, 21, Oregon, three best talent acquisition like coups that I've. I've been a part of, of this is what I'm most excited about, you know, this is where I played and all that stuff. And it's not done yet, you know, it didn't have a transfer portal back then, so you still have room to grow this thing even more. Okay, so uh, yeah, it just, it hit on all cylinders. I know we got a couple spots we mentioned that we've got to fill up a little bit more, but all in all, it's a complete class. It really is, you know, and it's going to make us better. Uh, our players are going to make them better. Our players played a huge role in these guys coming to the University of Miami. And you want your players to feel and take ownership in the recruiting process. That was a huge part of myself being a student athlete here under Coach Johnson and Coach Erickson. They made it clear, you want to have a great team, you recruit your teammates. You know who's a good guy. You know who's a competitor, right? Go get them. And they did. They did, and we're, we're super excited to have them. Anything else? Well, the loafers. Everybody's talking about. Look, I'm sorry I'm not as fashionable as you. You know, <laughs> resting here. I uh, look. I catch all kinds of hell from my wife on the way I dress all the time. So I appreciate you adding on to that. <laughs> so I mean, what can I say, man? I, I you know I don't have time to shop, but hopefully this off season, maybe you could find time to help me. <laughs> and we'll go with it. I don't know what to say, but uh, I can say this is very thankful and grateful to be here. We've got a lot of work to do. There is no flinching. There is no nothing except the mentality to go forward. Um, but the right pieces are starting to fall in place, and uh, you know, it's back to work. Right, back to work. Thank you. Very much.